The scriptures, a lot of things. But it seems the one thing that happened to be a few days ago, uh, the a button I guess I touched, which I wasn't even, I never thought people would respond like that. Mm -hmm. In the millions, they've watched that little clip. They, they, they didn't listen to the whole thing. They just took that few minutes and it went viral. It was all over India within three days and the UK and Europe. I was getting calls from everywhere. And uh, yes, Michael, I believe in giving. It's in the scriptures. Is it safe to say, just, is it safe to say this, that your issue is not with prosperity. You believe in prosperity. I'm going to say it clearly for the first time and last time. Yeah. I believe in the promises of God. I believe in the blessings that he has promised. I believe God wants us to succeed. I believe God wants us to be blessed. I don't believe in the gimmicks anymore. So it's the method. Right. Right. You believe in sowing. You believe in I believing. believe. Look, look. You cannot love Jesus and not be a giver. There you go. You cannot love the Lord and not be a giver. Because love is giving and go. giving is loving. God does not have an issue with his people prosper. No. I don't like anymore the word prosperity. I think the word prosperity, people start thinking negative about the word. I would rather say the blessings of God. Yeah. Okay. So let's just focus on does God want to bless us? Yes. There you go. Does he want us to, to succeed in life? Yes. Of course. He promised to meet our needs. That's in scripture. But when I hear a man today, and I did hear it a lot, you know, a lot. So this amount and claim this promise, it's not in the Bible. Why do you say that's not in the Bible? Not. It's not because you cannot put a price on a promise of God. You, you cannot say, now claim these seven promises with your gift. No, no, that's not in the scripture. That grieves the Holy Spirit. It, it's an offense to the Lord. Because we, we, we have to understand something about God's heart. When Paul the Apostle wrote 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and it's, such, it's, it's beautifully placed that God Almighty is so pleased with the people who give themselves first to the Lord. So here the church in Macedonia, who lived in poverty, not prosperity, poverty, yet they were rich in their spirit and gave out of love to the Lord to where he said that they were begging us to take the gift. Where Paul is saying, no, no, don't give this much. And the church says, no, no, please take it. They, and he said they gave themselves to the Lord first. And then to us, meaning to serve the church, the elders. And so they took their gift. And what Paul was saying to the church in Corinth is, I told you a year ago about this offering. That is to go to Jerusalem because the saints had gone through some famine. And the church wanted to help the church in Macedonia. In Macedonia wanted to help the saints in Jerusalem who gave them the gospel. And he's saying to, to the ones in Corinth, I already told you about this. I'm sending Titus to remind you. You already made your promise to me. So when we come, make sure you're ready. I'm paraphrasing. Sure. And then he says, now here's the, the way the church in Macedonia responded. Meaning, I expect the same from you. Mm -hmm. And then he said this. He said, as you abound in faith, as you abound in knowledge, 
as you abound in diligence, abound by this grace also. Meaning that when you give, let it be equal to your faith and love for the Lord. Right. And then he said, prove the sincerity of your love. Prove it. Now, when uh, Jessica has a birthday, Joshua has a birthday, my Tasha, who I wish was here, I love you, has a birthday. My Lily has a birthday. I go out and I buy the best gift I could find for them. And when Michael has a birthday, tomorrow, he's going to get a gift too. Amen. It shows how much... <laughs> what, what did you say? Amen. Amen, yeah. <laughs> I love you so much. It shows how much you love them because you bring a gift to say, I love you. It, when it's Christmas, you give a gift to your family members you love. But birthdays are special because birthday, you want to tell the man, the woman, the child whose day it is to say, I'm so glad you were born. So we give gifts out of love. How much more? Yes. Jesus. Yes. To give him out of hearts of love. So when, when the message today is, is preached in some circles, I want to say some circles, that's not even brought up. In, in, instead, it's gimmick. The, they abuse the truth of the message. They focus on what am I getting back? What am I getting back? Not what am I doing for the Lord I love? What am I getting back for it? And, 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 and they hear these promises that are not biblical. You're going to get this much in this many days. Well, how many people do you know that ever got a hundredfold return in seven days? Or whatever, in a week or a month or whatever. That's the problem. Would and sadly, God is I, putting his finger but, on the motive? Yes, but I must yeah. say this. I must say this. I said those same things because of pressure. I was trapped. I went to a certain place not long ago, and I ministered so powerfully on the Holy Spirit. People were healed and blessed. And the man who had me forced me into a position live that I hated being in. When I walked, I said, I don't like this. This is not me anymore. I don't want this. Because they trap you to be in a place you don't want to be in. Finally, I said, it's time for me to tell the world. And I didn't think that many would listen. It's time for me to tell the world, this is a, a soul matter. This is my heart. I just don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I've grieved you enough in my past. I've already hurt you enough in my past. I don't want to hurt him anymore. Period. About anything. I still have a problem loving my enemies, but I want to. Right. And I said, Lord, you told me to love my, my, my enemies. Please help me that I really want to. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you read another portion in, this, in the scripture. And my real, my real uh, challenge today is how can I truly, and I'm being as blunt and raw as I can, how can I truly deny self and care to my cross? I want to with all my being. That's my cry today. I want to be a true disciple of the master. I want to deny the world and self and care to my cross and follow him. Whatever the cost, whatever it takes. That's the gospel. Before, before I'm gone. Yeah. And truly preach the gospel. Yeah. That's what I want because nobody's preaching the cross. Someone has to preach it again. And it's just not me. It's you and, and so many others. And to be honest with you, the only people today preaching the real message are people like Franklin Graham. Jack Graham in Dallas. The Baptist pastors 
are the ones preaching the real message. You never hear a Baptist minister say the nonsense you hear today on other, in other circles. And because it is nonsense. It's not the word. So you, 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 you hear these amazing servants of the Lord, the Franklin Grahams, uh, the uh, Robert uh, Morris. Morris in Dallas and from Gateway and others. What a precious word they're giving. And they're standing strong for the, for, for the Lord Jesus. I'm so glad. Okay? Now, let's add to their voices. Let's be another voice. You be another voice. That we preach the cross of Jesus. We have to preach the cross again. And the cross, the cross is, means to deny these things. Deny self and the world. Well, how can you say, I'm carrying my cross, and yet you're saying things that don't line up with that? That's the problem. So, yes, I, I've, I've caused quite a stir, and some of them, some of them, whoever the them are, are not happy with me. Well, it doesn't, doesn't move me at all. I want to, I, I want one person to be happy with me. Him. That's it. So, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to change my stand. It, uh, no, never, never, never. But people may still see the remnants of the past and, oh, I see Benin changes mind. No, 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 no. That's a teaching that's still running around out there. Someone running a new, uh, an old program and they think I'm saying it again. Never. Never, never, never. And I told my staff, I said, you cannot put anything in the mail that I don't believe no more. You can't put anything on this is your day that, that I don't believe anymore. You cannot. You will not. And they're doing their best to make sure they go back in the history of the thousands and thousands of programs and tapes to remove things. I don't want in there. I don't want any next generation to see an old tape and say, oh my Lord, look what he said there. It's not going to happen. So we're going to erase it. It's going to take us a long time to clean all this stuff. But with the technology today, maybe we can do it quicker. I don't know. Let's hope. But I'm, I'm going to close with this because I think it's going to get late here. But, and we are going to have communion, right? We'll do it next week. Okay. Yeah. But uh, dear Michael, I want to point to one thing. Let's forget the prosperity matter right now, the blessings of God matter, which I already said, and I don't want to ever talk about it again. I'm done talking. So I said it. It's done. No more. Thank you, Michael, for letting me. Love now. But now let me. Can, can I take a few more minutes? Just, if just, and then you can ask me anything else you want on other things. Listen. I believe... The coming of the Lord is sooner than you think. Our eyes are about to behold him. The lover of our souls and the love of our life. Sweet, wonderful Jesus. He needs you to stand up for him. He is calling everyone in this room to carry his and her cross, and deny the world. Shut that world out of your life. Remove the old man. Paul said, put off the old man with all its lusts and corruptions. It's time to really be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Whatever the cost, whatever the cost, whatever the cost, because, because the Lord is grieving over his people. You know, the Lord that we love is very sensitive. His heart is broken. He is looking for someone to stand with him. You know, we don't know the Lord till we spend time with him. He is the sweetest, 
most gentle, most precious. <laughs> ah, forgive me. Gentle, gentle shepherd. How can I, how can I hurt that precious one with a message that's hurting his people? How can I hurt him when I preach something that's not in his word, whatever it may be? We have to forgive our enemies. We have to love our enemies. We have to forgive each other. It's tough to do. But with him, all is possible. And the Holy Spirit, his presence, we all want his presence. And what he asks of us is one thing. Give up the world. Shut the world out. Do not entertain the flesh. Do not entertain the things that God himself has delivered us from. He even hates the very garments touched by the flesh, it says in Jude. So here, here we have this sweet Savior. That's so real to us. And you, you, you read his word with new eyes. Because all, all you see is love. All you see is love in the Bible. You, you don't see anything but love. Even God talking about the law, giving Moses the details of the law. Why would God be so interested to offer his people such such a privilege to even to even talk to him what what, what kind of god is that yeah. forgive me <laughs> to allow humanity access to the throne yeah. angels don't have that access we do angels don't we do no angel can ever look up and say, Jesus, I love you so much. No angel. And only we can. And when we preach these messages that are hurting him, it's time to stop. When someone sits on a TV program and is ashamed to say his name, it hurts him. Yeah. He, he gave them a platform. He gave them a platform. He gave them a ministry. And when it comes to talking about his name, they won't even mention his name. How would you feel yeah. if you give somebody some special platform and they don't even mention your name? They're ashamed to talk about you. How dare they do that to the Lord? How dare they? How, how dare a man or a woman with, a, with a, a big ministry sit on some secular program? And not mention his name. How dare they? I'm not in the place today to, you know, be invited by the big TVs like I was. But I'll never forget when Larry King asked me. I and I was with Larry King three times. And he, he, and he was a little tough on me. He said, will Muslims go to heaven? Will, will Hindus go to heaven? I said, the Bible says, I didn't give him my opinion because I knew where he was going with that. I said, the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. And, and, and then Larry King says, what do you say? I said, I don't, it doesn't matter what I say. I'm telling you what Jesus said. And Catherine Kuhlman was on Phil Donahue years ago. And, and all she said is, the Bible says, the Bible says, that's our, our answer. When someone puts us in a tough spot, trying to trick us into answering something they want us to answer, all we need to say is the Bible says. That's it. And when, when Catherine, when Ms. Schumann, when, when Phil Donahue, some of you don't even know the name Phil Donahue, but the old timers do. When Phil Donahue said to Ms. Schumann, Stop hiding behind the Bible. She said, oh, Phil, it's the best place to hide. The only place to hide. Because she, she knew that the world would not understand. But 
my heart today is simply for the Lord. I don't want to disappoint him. I've done enough of that in my lifetime in the past, more than you people realize, okay? No more. He's, he, he's too precious and too holy and too sweet to be injured by preachers or anyone. So we have this picture of Jesus, the, the tough Nazarene, the carpenter. Yes, that is true. But never forget he's the gentle shepherd. Never forget he's the sweet rose of Sharon. Never forget he's the all lovely one. Never forget he will not even quench, it says, a wick. So this precious Jesus, if you love him, prove it. Prove it by the way you live. Prove it by the things you say. 